Welcome back to The Matchup. In this series, Jason and I are gonna compare two different bike offerings from one manufacturer because we agree, it's become harder and harder to pick the right steed for your stable. So today we're gonna compare the Trek Slash and the Trek Fuel EX. Just to be 100% clear, this is not a review. Our tech team has already done those on both of these bikes, and we'll put the links to those in the description below. So what the heck are we doing out here today? Well, we're here to provide helpful information in case you're deciding between these two bikes. And hey, maybe you're not, but maybe you're deciding between a trail bike or an enduro bike. A lot of this info is super helpful, and we'll cross over there as well. Visually speaking, these bikes look very similar, but there are tons of differences that set them apart from geometry to suspension design. We're gonna go deep today. We're gonna break down all those differences. So let's get started. First up, the Slash, which according to Trek is a long travel trail bike built for all mountain terrain, racing the clock on rugged enduro lines and having a rip roaring good time in the rough. Trex designed this bike to go fast, downhill, and steep technical terrain, just like you'd expect from an enduro race course, but it's also got to get riders to the top of some pretty big climbs, so it's not all downhill glory. And here we have the Fuel EX, which Trek says is a versatile, full suspension mountain bike that's fast on single track, capable in the rough, and fun wherever you ride it. Now, what does all that mean? Well, it seems like Trek designed this bike to be ridden on a wide variety of terrain from flowy berm trails to fast and tight single track and everything in between, including those tricky technical climbs. As stated before, these bikes look very similar. They both have 29 inch wheels. They've got the same suspension layout and they use premium products that you would expect from a 2021 mountain bike. We've got the one by drivetrain, a seat post with a generous amount of drop, plenty of travel in the suspension and the use of exotic materials. Now we'd be crazy not to mention that they we... look like sessions. Yes, Jason, that is true. But there are also some other things to mention. They such look as... exactly like sessions. <laughs> I can't disagree with you there. I mean, the Session is another bike in the Trek lineup, so it's, it's not uncommon to see the same suspension platform and design applied across the range. But there are some features on these bikes that are not so obvious to the naked eye, such as place to put your snacks and generous frame protection. And there's also the knock block, which is gonna keep your controls and your fork from ever damaging your frame. Now, while we're on the subject of frames, both of these frames have shocks bolted inside them, and whether you buy these bikes as complete or frame only, they're going to come with a through shaft shock. And it should help your bike track better and quicker on rougher terrain, whether that's going up, down, sideways, slantways, anyways. However, the Slash can be retrofitted with a coil, while the Fuel EX can only run an air shock. This is Christina's personal bike and it's a custom build, so she's chosen to go with a coil shock. And while we're at it, let's chat some other differences. We've got the Slash here, 160 mils of rear travel. This is an enduro race bike according to Trek versus the Fuel EX, which is a 130 mil rear travel trail bike. Now, obviously you can ride rougher terrain on the Fuel EX, or you can take the Slash on a mellow single track run, but that's not what they're intended for. Now, when we strip all the parts off these bikes and compare them frame to frame, the Slash comes in at 7.65 pounds and the Fuel EX 6.01 pounds. Now that's a medium carbon frame, both with a shock. And when you put parts on those bikes, the weight difference increases. If we look at the Fuel EX 9.9 X01, the full build comes at 28.61 pounds, while the Slash 9.9 X01 comes at 31.14 pounds. No surprise there, the Slash is a heavier bike as it should be. 
It is built for the rigors of enduro racing, aggressive terrain, and big hits. Compared to the Fuel EX here, which is gonna be your more all around trail bike. And if you're logging big days in the saddle, you'll appreciate the weight savings. Let's move on to suspension. Now we can hop between different bikes with different amounts of travel, but our body weight isn't going to change, except when maybe you overindulge at lunch. So that means we expect decent shock performance out of a bike, no matter what the travel. Now these bikes use Trex ABP suspension layout, which uses a concentric pivot at the rear axle. While they use the same layout, the bikes feel very different. The Slash here has a more progressive suspension curve so that as you get closer to the end of the stroke, it's harder to move through the remainder of the travel. This is good because you get a softer feeling bike in the beginning or initial part of that stroke, but it's still gonna offer you decent bottom out resistance. It also means that this bike will play nicely with a coil shock. And as for the Fuel EX, it's actually a little less progressive than the Slash, which means you might wanna set it up with as little as 25% sag as opposed to 30% on the Slash. Now this could mean it'll give you more efficiency over that small to medium sized chatter, whether you're going up or down. Enduro riders might choose to go for a coil shock in certain terrain, given the small bump compliance and extra grip that they offer. Although it can make the bike feel a little less responsive and less poppy at times. It's also worth mentioning that coil shocks are certainly not light and they're not as easy to adjust for your rider weight compared to an air shock. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk numbers because those don't lie. And for argument's sake, let's pretend Christina's bike is a large, even though it's a small, and we're gonna compare it to a large Fuel EX. There are only a few contact points between yourself and your bike, so dialing those in will help you when it comes to purchase a bike. Now, one of those big numbers to look at is frame reach. Looking at a large Fuel EX, it has a reach of 470 millimeters in the low setting and 475 millimeters in the high setting. Now compare that to the Slash, which is 486 millimeters in the low setting and 491 millimeters in the high setting. The shorter reach and wheelbase on the Fuel EX could make it more maneuverable in tight sections of trail and dare I say, have more nimbility than the Slash. C2 bangles have finally gotten a bit steeper over the past few years, and that's helpful to keep more weight on the front wheel, especially on those steep technical climbs, coupled with the long reaches we now see. The Fuel EX has an effective C2 bangle of 75 degrees in the low setting and 75.5 degrees in the high setting. In comparison, the Slash has over a half a degree steeper effective seat tube angle so that it sits at 75.6 degrees in the low setting and 76.1 in the high setting. Last but not least, let's talk about head tube angle. And as you can imagine, the slacker your head tube angle is, the further your weight is behind the front wheel, which gives you way less of a chance of going out the front door. However, believe me, it can still happen. So a slack head tube angle is great for those rowdy descents and steep trails and transitions. On the Fuel EX, you have a 66 degree head tube angle in the low setting and 66.5 degree in the high setting. Now compare that to the Slash at 64.1 in the low setting and 64.6 in the high setting, and that's nearly two degrees of head tube angle. So how many dollar dues are you looking to spend? You can get a fully built slash from Trek with an aluminum frame for $36.99 US dollars. If you want the super ballin' 9.9 .9 build on the slash with carbon frame and wireless components, you're looking at $12,499. Or for just the frame, $36.99. As for the Fuel EX, complete builds with an aluminum frame start at $24.49 and go all the way up to a high-end build with a carbon frame for $10,499. If you just want a carbon frame and shock, you're looking at $32.99. Both of these bikes have plenty of options in their lineups for varying budgets and riding styles. We have covered so much information today, but what does it all mean? Just tell us already. Well, if you find yourself between the tape on those enduro race courses, or you're smashing some bike park laps perhaps, riding the roughest terrain around while only sometimes going back up for another lap, 
you might look into the Trek Slash. Yeah, and alternatively, if you're a rider who spends long days in the saddle on moderately rough terrain that only gets steep sometimes, the Fuely X might be the bike for you. Easier said than done, we have given you our best crack at to why and how these two bikes from Trek match up against each other. Truthfully speaking though, whatever bike you're riding is gonna be the most fun bike. But as you can see here, there's times when you just need the right tool for the job. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for watching us hash it out. And hey, if you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know what two bikes you wanna see matched up next.